I first arrived as a medical missionary in Oman on board a ship, the British India Steamship Company, steamer that brought Peter with my family, my wife, and four children. Of course, from that viewpoint, Oman looked very rugged. The mountains rose sheer from the sea, big black basaltic mountains, and I wondered where the harbor was because it seemed as if the ship was heading right for destruction. It seemed to be heading straight for these precipitous mountains, but suddenly it took a right angle turn and then we were in the harbor. Here, a perfectly circular harbor, which once upon a time had been a volcanic crater, and on the shore we gleamed the white houses, the Sultan's Towers, the British Council, and some of the more prosperous merchants' homes. On both sides of the harbor were these great Portuguese forts, which now are used, one as a penitentiary and the other as a garrison. Soon little boats were coming, and some into one of these we unloaded our goods and were rowed ashore. Wells Tones, human being, man, husband, father, Christian, doctor, representative of the Reformed Church in America, Christian to the people of Oman, missionary. Under orders from God and prepared by prayer and training, Dr. Tomes and his family arrived in the Middle East in 1931. Over the next 40 years, they gave their lives to join that company of men and women everywhere whose task it is to do the Master's work. Dr. Tomes' term as missionary was one of change. Oil was discovered first in Kuwait, later in Bahrain, then throughout the Middle East. A new spirit of nationalism rose, adding more problems to the already difficult task of communicating the good news to the Muslims. Standards of living around the world were raised, making the poor health conditions of undeveloped nations such as Oman stand out more acutely. Supporting Christians began to question some aspects of mission work. This also changed the spirit and style of missionary endeavor around the world. Dr. Tome's work in Oman spanned four decades of such radical change. He reminisced about his life in Oman in an interview recorded shortly before his death. The country looks forbidding and severe and uh, desolate, but these people are very friendly people. The food comes mostly from the sea. The Omanis use nets and lines and hooks, and this is a very inefficient way to harvest the great riches of the sea. Their date gardens, their date palms provide dates, and this is their second source of food. Third source of food is their uh, goats and sheep, as well as rice, which is imported, and a certain amount of wheat, which is raised. There are areas where the land is rich if they get rains. On the high mountains in the interior, they get a higher uh, rainfall, and this water flows down to the valleys and is caught in the springs, and uh, the ancient Persians built uh, underground waterways. They're called felags in the country, and there you have the beautiful oases where the fruit trees grow. Muscat is considered by some people the hottest country in the world. I think one of the stories that describe the constant heat of the summer is that the Dykes were once given a hen as a present, and uh, they put it in a little room under the house, uh, and they had it for their Sunday morning dinner. A couple of weeks later, they heard a beep, beep, beep sound in that room and went in and found two little chicks that hatched out for the eggs that had not been sat on for two weeks. The temperature had been so close to the temperature of an incubator that it didn't need a hen to hatch these chicks out. And that's a true story. It is a, a custom that you cannot or should not leave a house without drinking coffee with a host. You go around two or three times, but it's very strong. It's fresh coffee. I have found as coming at the end of a tour, 
getting off a camel or a donkey, feeling very tired, being invited by first Arab I met to have coffee with him. He would first serve some dates, and then some coffee, and then some dates. A combination of the quick pickup from the carbohydrates and the dates and the stimulating caffeine effect would really pep us up. Mission work today changes, as all things must. But in its ever-advancing development, today's mission builds upon the solid foundation laid by men of vision, men like Wells Tomes. Today, the hospital is operated by the missionaries, but supported by the government of Oman. Years ago, however, Dr. Tomes experienced many problems in the daily well, routine. It was like that. So a patient would book a room, any visitor would come to the hospital, would find the whole family in the room, and the cooking going on right there. They did all their business, they saw the town, and went away happy that they'd been uh, in Muscat. Medically, they would come in with malaria, and some of them were very sick with malaria. Malaria kills a lot of children. Also dysentery, bacillary dysentery, amoebic dysentery is very common. Tuberculosis is a killer in the country. I would say that it's one of their major problems, and it gives us great joy when we know that this young sultan wants to do something definitely for the people to help stamp out tuberculosis. And there's typhoid fever. There's tetanus. There's meningitis, hepatitis. And we also have leprosy. It's not common. But the leper today in Oman is like the wa he was in the days of the Christ. He's rejected by people. And through the help of the American Leprosy Mission, we have the funds there to take care of people with leprosy. During the 20 years that we've been treating leprosy, we've had over 450 cases of leprosy, of which about 300 have been discharged negative after three years of treatment. So surgically, we get all kinds of cases. The uh, cases we see in our hospitals there are not much different than we see in America, but often the intensity is greater. They come in too late very often. The staff members are some Muslims and some Christians. The Christians on our staff are some of our best workers. This, I hope, partly because they are Christians. Now, most of our assistants are Omani men and women who are carry the bulk of the work. Both the uh, treatments done by nurses in our hospitals are done by these young people. When I took over the charge hospital, there were only four men as a staff. Now they're about 180. And this last year, they've been putting all their time to teaching because the young sultan has urged us to teach more, and uh, now they have a two-year term training nurses from the young men and women of the country. Nahatha, the Arabs call it, renaissance, a new feeling, an awareness, an awakening. As Dr. Tome's reputation spread, that of Christian, healer, a concerned human being, Omanis realized that they too could serve their people as Dr. Tomes was doing. He was then able to direct more effort into the area of his medical well, specialty. I have in the last few years specialized in eye surgery and eye diseases, but about 90% of them have a disease called trachoma, which is a disease of the upper eyelids. And of course, there are a certain number of cataract operations. Last year we did about 120. It's a great clue, of course, to be able to um, restore the sight for a person whose sight has become very dim. Each doctor has so many mornings in the outpatient department and so many mornings in the operating room. But in the old days, I saw them all because I was the only, only doctor. Our hospital, or in fact, the only hospital in the country, so that's just the people that town themselves uh, must get them up with a population of 20,000, would make a very busy clinic. So although they're only seeing maybe a fraction of all the people in the country, Still, uh, uh, 1% would make uh, 1,000 people in the morning. In that parable of the Good Samaritan, we who have heard this all our lives are not quite thrilled by it, as the Omanis who never heard it before. The contrast between the robbers who robbed the man, the man's need himself, the two men that went by and 
saw the need but did nothing about it. And then this other man who had compassionate heart and stopped and did something about it. And then Jesus commanded that lawyer, say, go ye and do likewise. This has struck fire in the hearts of Christians every time from the time of Christ. And I think it is responsible more than anything else for the fact that there are Christian missionary hospitals all over the world in every desolate and deserted place as in Muscat Oman. Traditional mission work is centered around many areas, including healing and teaching and setting examples of Christian behavior and ideals. This is still true, though the burden of actual work and administration has shifted to the government in many countries. Long before this in Oman, Beth Tomes recognized the great need for basic education. One of her main contributions has been to teach uh, people, Omanis, their own language, teach them how to read. Amongst uh, her more apt pupils are leprosy patients. They're there for three years on the average, and quite a few of them have learned to read the Bible, read Arabic, and gone away back home to their own villages with this ability to read, which has raised their self-respect, of course, and their status in the village, the school we have is the only girls' school in the country until this last fall when the government opened this school for girls. Uh, before that, there were two schools for boys, primary schools in the whole country, no secondary school, no high school. In our school, the mission school, there might be a few boys, but most of them are beautiful young ladies singing in very correct Arabic and reciting the prophecies and the fulfillment of Christ's coming from the Bible. Worship activities in the school and hospital and church are the center of our work. In the hospital we have prayers before starting our morning clinic. Then on Sunday morning at about 11 o'clock we used to have a service that people could come to. And then at prayer, Sunday mornings, 9.30 years later, there's a service in the Moscow Chapel. At this uh, service, usually lasting about an hour, we run through a service very similar to those in our churches in America. In the hospital, it's usually the uh, Omani Christians who are in charge and decide who's going to do the speaking. The program is more and more in the hands of the locals. We think that's good. The fervor of nationalism is a dominant force throughout the Arab world today. Dr. Tomes was part of that era, exhorting Omani men and women to heed the call of Jesus, healing, treating the sick, setting examples of Christian love. We have them singing, and I remember my father and mother often play the old Moody and Sankey hymns, of which one of them was Trust and Obey. It didn't impress me so much when I was a teenager or in college or my early years, but gradually these two words came through to me, Trust and Obey. And that is working out there unless we believe he is what he said he was, the Son of God, and that he is the head, that he is on the show. So Trust and Obey, these two words I like to leave with other people. Of course, I'm sure the chief witness is whether we act like Christians, and this is the hardest part of life in the push and pull and tension of work. It has been told to us that acts of my father, Dr. Paul Harrison, Dr. Fusingfeld, and other and nurses on the staff have really influenced young men or women to want to become Christians. My regrets as I look backward is that I didn't take enough time just to share my beliefs as I could. The opportunity for a surgeon or a nurse or a technician to still share his faith and to witness in a quiet, effective way are still there. Because with all the people coming, most of them are coming with, with need. And a person who really believes that Jesus Christ, his Lord and Master, is able to meet all these needs, is going to share that with others.
Well, I like what Dachkani said. Uh, Hassan Dachkani wrote that book, you know, uh, Design of My Life. He was a convert in uh, Iran, and now he's the bishop in Isfahan. And he wrote and said, Don't stop telling the Muslims this wonderful truth, because then you're cheating them. You're not sharing the best you've got. And uh, it's their right to hear, and it's your duty to tell if you believe it's the truth. Wells Holmes, the missionary of the Reformed Church in America. The work continues. The need continues. Prayer and sacrificial support will ensure the fulfillment of the needs of others in Oman or Kuwait or India, America, Ethiopia, wherever the love of Jesus is carried. Very often this talk goes around to who we serve and why we have come there and what we're doing, what is the meaning of our message. And I think that's in these periods when we get further in uh, understanding and dialogue. Now, it's on us. We can't just say we submit a speech and that's it. You know, it'll rest on the laurel. It's got to be more of a heart-to-heart -heart dialogue. You tell, they can hear, the acceptance is up to the individual, whether it be in America or anywhere else.